Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in June, at least the first part. Uh, I read somewhere between 15 and 20 books. And since I'm actually listening to all of these books, I listened to that many books, which I don't even know how that happened. Today we're going to talk about some of the books. Uh, I have reviewed the, some of these books elsewhere. So what I'm going to do is if that is the case, I will link that down below. I will tell you obviously, and then I will link it down below. Of course, per usual, all of the books will also be linked down below. And if I mention I buddy read something with someone, that will also be linked down below. I'm very dedicated to my show notes. Have you guessed yet? Have you guessed yet? <laughs> all right, so let's start with the books. First up is a fun, fluffy book that I wanted to pick up because I like to listen to those on plane rides and we were going to book expo. So that is We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. And this is based on like, I would say ancient Arabian, like folklore kind of stuff going on. And it's about these different like sultanates, like little kingdoms that are part of a larger kingdom, if you want to think about it that way. And there's this forest that's encroaching and then there's this woman who is disguising herself as a hunter because women aren't allowed to hunt and she's somehow able to go into this forest. And then she ends up going to this island. Um, there's also an assassin. Lots of stuff happens. In a lot of ways it reminded me of Roshni Chokshi and some of the stories that she has told and the style, particularly of the Gilded Wolves. Um, I would say I really enjoyed the first half of this book and the second half of this book kind of petered out for me. I think this is supposed to be a duology, but I thought it was fun, but I didn't find it particularly well written. That said, this is a debut novel. I think debut novelists should have more uh, room to experiment and try to figure out what they're doing. So I would love to read something else by Hafsa Faisal as well, uh, but you know, it's a debut novel. She has a great imagination. I think she's a pretty good storyteller. So, you know, it takes time sometimes. I think V.E. Schwab is a great example of that. So uh, if you want to read something in the vein of Roshni Chokshi, something like that, uh, then definitely pick up this book. So another book that I listened to as kind of a fluffy, fun read is Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. And this is her first adult fantasy book. And this is about two twins that are like separated at birth. And one, he's really into language. And the other one, she's really into math. And uh, they're trying to... Stuff happens. I don't know how to describe this book. <laughs> um... Yeah, so basically these people are trying to use them and their powers to take over the world and they don't even know that they are related at first and then the first part of the book is them figuring out who they are and becoming friends and they can talk to each other over long distances. And I would say that this book is also very fun and fluffy, but I I not it's not it's not very well written on a sentence level we'll just say that uh you know shauna mcguire's strengths are that she has a great imagination and she's a great storyteller uh but i don't quite think her writing chops are up uh to this task of this very ambitious novel quite yet i really like the way that she used the world and her world building i think is really great but for me, it was just like a fun book that I would listen at 2 a.m. in the morning. And I thought it was fun for that purpose. And I appreciate her storytelling. But yeah, um, I think the prose would probably get on some people's nerves a little bit. At least she's not as didactic as she is in, you know, Every Heart of Doorway series, which I still read because she has great storytelling and great world building. So if you like Shauna McGuire's other books, then I would probably guess that you would really like this one as well, because it's in a similar vein. I also read a thriller, um, and that is uh, My Sister the Serial Killer by Oinkan Braithwaite. And I am like the last person on booktube to read this book. That's Dylan. He's just drawing a toy. We actually interviewed Oyan for the podcast and she was lovely to talk to. And I think that this book is more of a thought experiment. She said that she started out with the idea of what kind of attachment would it take for someone to, you know, have a friend or a sister or whatever that was killing people and you would be willing to clean up uh, that mess. And she said the original title of this book was, you know, blood is thicker than water or something like that. And it kind of went on that theme. I personally didn't find this very thrilling, but I did enjoy reading like the layers that she created of the psychology of what it would take for someone to be willing to clean up their sister's murdered boyfriends and toss them 
somewhere. Dispose of their bodies. Uh, the interview goes up next week as of this recording, so definitely check it out. Uh, stay tuned because that will be coming for this one. So I have a plan for a video where I'm going to review some middle grade books from South Asian, Middle Eastern, and Muslim uh, authors, and there have been so many great middle reader books that fall into this category. Uh, one of them that I really enjoyed is In Other Words by Jasmine Warga. This is a story in verse um, about a Syrian uh, refugee. She and her mom moved to the United States uh, with her to where her uncle lives, and she, you know, is trying to make her way in the world. I think this would be a great book for middle readers to learn about this very difficult topic about what's going on in Syria. So I'm gonna review this later with that other group of books, but just stay tuned because uh, it is, it's so delightful. I mean, look how gorgeous that cover is. So a book that I read with uh, Britta over at The Second Shelf and Eric at The Lonesome Reader is this book, All the Lives uh, We Ever Lived by Catherine Smythe. This is out from Crown. And this book is about Catherine's experience with her dad's passing. And it's paralleled with To the Lighthouse. And so like To the Lighthouse, it's structured in three acts. Uh, like a parent dies into the lighthouse and her parent is dying and there's a grief process there. I found it very interesting. Now, we all were kind of nerdy and started looking up interviews and different things like you do, and we discovered that originally she had written the memoir without the Virginia Woolf element, but then she thought it needed something else to make it more compelling, and she added Virginia Woolf into the story. And I think you can tell that like there's a bit of stretching going on in places. It doesn't quite fit, but I do think on the whole it is a better memoir with that element in the you know in the story i wouldn't recommend this necessarily to people who want to just read a great memoir i think you really have to love virginia wolf or at least read to the lighthouse to fully uh like immerse yourself in this story uh but if you do love virginia wolf then i think this might be an interesting uh memoir for you to look at but it was great being able to basically gush about virginia wolf to eric and britta who also love virginia wolf and we basically just need to start our own little club with like tote bags and stickers and bookmarks. Guys, if you like this idea, let me know. We should totally do that. <laughs> So occasionally I do video interviews with authors uh, when they come to South Carolina. And one of those is Jessica Handler, the bang and this is The Magnetic Girl. This is her debut novel. And this is about a girl in the 1880s in rural Georgia. And she starts this vaudeville act as the magnetic girl. And she's a very tall, very big girl. And so, but still she's a girl and she's able to kind of manipulate the show. It is like one of those fake kind of carnival like shows that you would, you would think of. Uh, but this is actually based on a real person. And I was able to talk to Jessica about how this book came to be, the research that she did, and just the process of her understanding this character. She said that she learned a lot about what uh, this character did, but she wanted to know more about why. And so she wrote this fictionalized version. So if you're interested in like Southern historical fiction, I, I think you might be very interested in this kind of story. I think she did a great job of the characterization of Lulu Hurst in this book. And the interview with her is going up at the end of the month. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so the next book I wanna to talk to you about is a book that we're gonna discuss on the podcast later, but it's gonna be a while. Uh, but this is Ask Me About My Uterus. A Quest to Make Doctors Believe in Women's Pain by Abby Norman. It's out from Nation Books. And this is a very personal book for me. I have been putting off reading this book, even though I knew I wanted to read it for a long time, because I also have endometriosis, which is what the, you know, Abby has. And this is her story. But it also looks at the intersection of uh, being a working class person and having a severe chronic disease. And so she was emancipated from her parents when she was 16 because her mother and sometimes her grandmother were very abusive to her. And so she talks about that, about trying to get help and medical help when you're 16 and no one will believe you and your emancipated paperwork that you basically have to carry everywhere so you don't have to have a legal guardian sign things for you. And she also looks at endometriosis and what people still believe about endometriosis. And I learned so much about it, but she really has put so much research into this and has updated research studies and information in it. 
this was also very difficult obviously for me to read because I felt like in many ways I was reading part of my own story about uh, you know, being a woman in pain and being disbelieved when you go to medical professionals. And she points out in the book that a lot of people think that you get sick, you go to a doctor, they do tests, you take something and you're cured. Like, that is a very basic idea. But that's not how it works. And for women, historically, she points out in a lot of her research that women have been disbelieved in their pain and how women do not get the help that they need because, you know, women are still labeled as hysterical. So we're going to discuss this book on the podcast in August for those episodes. So I'm trying to like gird up my emotional loins and prepare to talk about something that is so personal for me. It was refreshing to read a story like this where she's calling out the medical community and society at large for disbelieving women's pain. And the subtitle, The Quest to Make Doctors Believe in Women's Pain, is basically the entire book of her doing her own research and going to a doctor and presenting her findings and say, please test me for this because the doctors were uninformed or wouldn't do it themselves. And that happens every day, all day to women across the nation. So, oh. So one of my favorite books this month is The Old Drift by Namwali Sapel. And I actually read most of this earlier in the year and I just finished it at the very beginning of June, but I realized I haven't talked about it yet. Now we ended up interviewing Namwali on the podcast, so I'm gonna link that down below, but this book is so good. It is the history of Zambia by following a white, a brown, and a black family throughout history and they all kind of find each other and how they intersect with each other. One of the interesting things I thought about this book is when we were talking to her, she said that the different characters are written in different genres. And then when they meet, it's so fascinating, those dynamics. And I love this book. It's kind of book that demands the slow reading um, that it deserves, but it's very compelling. And I find that if you would like a book like maybe Pachinko, where it's a long period of time and it's a family that you're following, this would definitely be something that you'd want to pick up. We can't stop gushing about this book. It's so good. <laughs> Just gonna <sighs> go read this book. <laughs> All right, so that's the first part of my June wrap up. I will be back in a few days to give you the second part of my June wrap up. Uh, but please let me know your thoughts on these, any that you might want to pick up. Again, they're all linked in the description box along with all of the things that I mentioned. And yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.